Hello and welcome. Now we have arrived at the most interesting and much awaited part of the 13th Foundation Day celebration of the Central University of Odisha at Koraput. As the Central University of Odisha is the premier and the only central university in the state of Odisha, we have always nurtured a learner's mind. And as an academic institution, we deem fit to have a Foundation Day lecture by an eminent and reputed academician to observe the Foundation Day and to learn from his vast experience. We are extremely happy today that we have amongst us Professor G. Padmanabhan, a very, very eminent and reputed scientist of the country and of international repute among us to deliver the Foundation Day lecture of the Central University of Odisha. We also have amongst us Professor Sharath Kumar Palita, Vice Chancellor, Central University of Odisha. I welcome Professor Padmanabhan and Professor Palita to this Foundation Day lecture event. Welcome both of you, sir. Now, now I request Professor Palita to kindly flag off the Foundation Day lecture event, sir. Thank you, Saurav. On behalf of the students, faculty, and all members of the staff, I deem it a privilege to welcome the renowned scientist of India and of international repute, Professor G. Padmanabhan, former director, Indian Institute of Science, and presently the Chance Honorable Chancellor, Central University of Tamil Nadu. Sir, it is an august moment for Central University of Orissa. I am extremely thankful that uh, you agreed for this momentous occasion to deliver the foundation day lecture, sir. And uh, we know that, sir, your contribution is so great. It is simply on my part, it will be foolish. But for the benefit of my students and colleagues, I must say that, sir, was recognized much later as Padma Bhushan or Padma Sri, but his contribution goes way back around 30 to 40 years. He is one of the leading biochemists of our country as well as a leading biotechnologist. And he has contributed greatly in these fields from last five decades. So I again thank you, sir. And I deem it again a privilege for your august presence. And I wish your foundation the lecture will be greatly beneficial for our students and academic community. And it will inspire us to take our university forward as well as our country forward. With these words, I will request Honorable Professor G. Padmanabhan sir to deliver his foundation the lecture. Thank you, sir. Sir. Thank you, Professor Palita, for, uh, for the introduction and uh, Saurav for making all these uh, technicalities possible. So uh, it's indeed a great pleasure and honor for me to have been invited to give this uh, Foundation Day lecture. So I was reading a little bit about the Central University of Odisha. And as uh, Saurav said, it is a very only central university in the state. You know, that is something uh, we can all be proud of. And I was looking at the mission and vision of the uh, university. Obviously, you know, the, the vision is to become one of the best universities of the globe. That's fine. And you have several objectives of the vision. And one of the things that attracted me was uh, disseminate inclusive education to reach the unreached. To my mind, this is a, you know, a huge opportunity, a, a very unique opportunity to reach the unreached. And especially the tribal population. In my opinion, you know, we know that Odisha has a large number of uh, 
tribes, tribal population. And Korapur probably is uh, right in the uh, middle of all these. And to my mind, education has to be both ways. You know, we can look at their uh, standard of living, we can contribute everything to improve, uh, you know, formal education, etc. But we can also learn, learn from them. You know, there, is, there are a lot of things which we can learn from the tribal communities. And I do see you have uh, um, 14 departments and uh, seven schools. And I saw there was, there is an anthropology department, but in social sciences. So I'm pretty certain they are addressing many of the, uh, and there are tribal studies. And uh, so I think you, you must be doing, um, you know, um, tribal cultural studies, social economic aspects and so on. But as you rightly said, Professor Palita, I come from life science background. I am a biochemist. Therefore, I I work with the malaria parasite. Therefore, you know, I I look at from the from that perspective of uh, what is the medical or biomedical contribution which the university can make actually. Uh, you know, till uh, last year, I was president of the National Academy of Sciences, uh, Allahabad. Many of you would have heard. It's the oldest uh, science academy in the country. And it has got a specific program for tribal study. Many, many uh, uh, projects. However, 20 centers have been established actually and some of the projects are related to malnutrition and you know, sickle cell anemia, maternal and infant mortality, safe water scarcity, contaminated disease problems, birth control measures, use and documentation of herbal ethnic medicines, problems of ethnocentrism, anthropological intervention for protecting the socio-scientific values of their multi-dimensional cultural ethos. I'm sure some of these aspects probably uh, your anthropology department is uh, doing it. But uh, at the outset, I want to make an appeal to the government uh, Central University of Odisha needs a life science department or a school of life sciences. I know uh, there are uh, financial issues and uh, to have a life science school, you have, you will have to invest uh, quite a bit in laboratory equipment. And I, but I feel uh, Odisha needs it. I mean, I think that is very, very uh, important in my opinion. Let me take malaria as an example. Uh, there are many other issues, but I, because I work in this area, Odisha has done a great uh, achievement there. Many of you would have heard about this Daman program. This is the Durgama Anchalare Malaria Nirakarna. Basically, malaria elimination in remote areas and this program very successfully and even internationally recognized by the Odisha government where you know they have brought down incidents of malaria among the tribal population among people of Odisha substantial how was it done this is done by individual, what we call as a rapid diagnostic test. First of all, you do the test and then immediately treat them. We have very powerful drugs like artemisinin-based derivatives and so on. You treat them. Then vector control. You know, the disease is caused by mosquito and therefore vector control, distribution of bed nets. To, to protect them against uh, mosquito bites. And finally, it is the education. 
people have to be educated uh, how uh, serious is malaria you know there is a joke actually um, you know they will all have bed nets and they will sleep under the bed net in the night but during the day they will go to the forest and get bitten by the mosquito so the distribution of bed net doesn't make sense because they are getting bitten in the forest and so they like that you know this is uh, but still i think there are statistics say substantially malaria from now but i must caution the even globally i should tell that uh, goal of who is to eradicate malaria or eliminate malaria you can't eradicate but you can eliminate malaria and uh, they say there are 11 countries which are uh, kind of need to be watched 10 of them are african countries and the one country outside of africa is india so there is still an issue uh, although malaria has come down globally it still accounts for 250 million cases and 450000 deaths and who says india accounts for 4% of malaria cases if you really calculate 4% of uh, 250 million will be 10 million cases but uh, government numbers are much much uh, lower you know i am talking about the central government the numbers are much smaller than what who says similarly deaths and that is why you know let's not i'm not worried about the number but honestly on the ground our people benefited this is where uh, you know what is happening i will come to covid uh, in a few minutes same issue the, the children are, are the main problem of malaria they become asymptomatic which means they carry the parasite parasite is but they, are, they don't have the fever they are running around because they have antibodies they are they are living in an endemic area but they are the biggest reservoirs of to spread the malaria therefore we cannot assume although i would congratulate the on the daman program you know we cannot assume that, that we have eliminated malaria even the country as a whole has a goal to eliminate malaria by 2030 they say even 2025 yeah i don't think it is possible 2030 we will eliminate malaria the dghs of the country uh, uh, they think it, it is possible but i you know this is just one example because this is a field i am familiar where if you have a life science department this is where you know lot of biomedical research lot of biomedical applications it is possible you can contribute you can participate in this daman program you can participate in the diagnostic tools these are di- you know rapid diagnostic tests are not a big deal actually you know the kits are available and you will have students working on these areas you know uh, uh, unlike in many of us many uh, well funded institutions spend time mostly on basic research and publication that is important but i feel science has to reach the people also it just not enough if only publication for there uh, what does it mean to the people of the country so i feel this is very important and then you know you have a similar situation with covid now i am not very clear to what extent the the tribal population is affected by covid i don't know how much statistics is available is it you know the, we are we went through uh, wave one we went through wave two and uh, it is the uh, whole thing is supposed to be coming down but i am not very sure. everybody is scared uh, wave three third wave will come and uh, again the problem of uh, covid is uh, people will be asymptomatic there are a large number of people 
who will have the virus, but it will not show COVID. Therefore, how do you detect, how do you identify? You can't identify every India. India has a huge population, 1.3 billion population. Therefore, it is not possible to check each individual. So, but there has to be. That is where I feel, uh, you know, your research angle is very essential. You, know, you decide representative populations, you know, the statistics departments, uh, all your other uh, social science departments can decide what should be the population that should be representative individuals who should be tested, whether they manifest the fever or whether they manifest the disease or not. I think it is very important for them, uh, you know, to be tested. And if they are tested, you know, the government says uh, you do quarantine. Uh, you have a whole lot of treatment. Honestly speaking, there is no real treatment available for this uh, disorder. All the drugs are, you know, uh, they are all used for other viral disorders like HIV and all that. So there is no drug which is very specific for COVID. But of course, clinicians will use anywhere between uh, hydroxychloroquine, remdesivir, and all those things they will use. But uh, you know, you really need research to really find a new drug. Therefore, what is it that is protecting? There are only two things that will protect. One is the vaccine. Other one is wearing the mask. Wearing the mask is perhaps even more important than the vaccine. Somehow, you know, uh, I have seen even in Bangalore, uh, uh, when I go to the institute, I find a lot of people traveling on scooters and I know on two wheelers. The uh, mask will be lying around the neck, just like the snake around the Shiva, you know. Uh, what is the point? They don't cover the mouth, they don't cover the nose. So, to my mind, you know, these are all. Uh, when you said education to to reach the unreached, this is also very important part of education. I feel people should be taught how to wear a mask, and actually better to wear a double layer of cotton mask than not. And perhaps I even have said in other places it should become a corporate social responsibility to distribute masks to the entire population. You know, why not? You know, this is something which is very, very important. And the other one is vaccine. There is a phenomenon called vaccine hesitancy. There are people still who do not want to take the vaccine or they do not believe in the vaccine, they are afraid of the vaccine. You know, there are also, you know, uh, some kind of uh, propaganda, long propaganda that uh, vaccine causes autism, vaccine causes, uh, you know, uh, infertility. This is not true. There is, uh, you know, if you look at the history of medicine, there is no other medical in intervention that has saved millions and billions of lives over a million years, right from Jenner's time, you know, you might have heard cowpox vaccine to treat smallpox. From that time onwards, how many infectious diseases uh, vaccination has saved? Unbelievable. But there will always be uh, maybe a very small number of side effects, a very small number of deaths also can be there. But, you know, we cannot... Uh, because of that, when it, the positive angle is something like 99% or 99.9% and the negative aspect is 0.1%, you don't throw the therapy. Therefore, I feel this is part of education. Vaccine hesitancy uh, should be dealt with and tell people. I do not know, for example, the tribal people or they uh, uh, worse to take the vaccine, or they prepared to take the vaccine. I don't know, but to my mind, you know, this is probably you know, some of the social sciences departments can even do in terms of education. 
uh, very very important to to let them uh, you know know wearing the mask and having the vaccination and one thing has been clearly proven all the research publications have shown if you take two doses of the vaccine the two vaccines they are now available definitely hospitalization and severity is prevented people may still get infected you know that been, these are called as vaccine breakthrough cases even after vaccination somebody is getting infected but they will not develop a severe disease so this is the more, uh, this is universally almost globally it has been proven for all the vaccines that are being used in the globe therefore i think you know vaccination is very very important we only have two vaccines but you know i also chair another committee where the department of biotechnology has supported another four vaccines indigenous vaccines some of you might have heard about the dna vaccine which zydus cadila is talking about which is the big which is supposed to be released shortly this is the quoted and messenger rna vaccine this is another very unique uh, rna vaccine dna vaccine and we have protein vaccine and we have uh, conventional vaccine conventional vaccine is nothing but the inactivated virus the virus causes the disease but you inactivate the virus and inject it and that is what is bharat biotech is doing. that is bharat biotech vaccine or you can uh, use adenovirus to transmit the spike protein and that is the other uh, uh, other vaccine from uh, astrazeneca uh, which is now done by serum institute in india but we will hopefully have another maybe three four vaccines soon because the biggest challenge you see how do you vaccinate all the people where are the number of uh, we do not have the capacity to produce that many doses i actually wrote an article in one of the newspapers in a some months ago i calculated they said all individuals they have about 18 years will be vaccinated and that is 75 crore population now 75 crore if you have to give two doses you have to give 150 crore doses that comes to 1500 million doses if you really look at what we have covered we have probably covered maybe 25% 30% single dose and only about 10% both the both the doses so we have a long way to go you know we are claiming we will vaccinate all of the people before december going to be a huge challenge i am hoping the other indigenous vaccines will also come up and once they come up probably we will have four five vaccines and each of them will make and probably we will also import some vaccines india is negotiating for sputnik vaccine probably is available will be available soon Uh, modern uh, Pfizer, many of you would have heard, many of you students would have heard, and you know I want to, you know this is all possible if you have a life science department. I'm going back to the same theme. <laughs> you know, uh, also, uh, you know, you have somewhat, you know, uh, life science related biodiversity and conservation of natural resources. I see that. as of course very very important so far as uh, odisha is concerned not any state is concerned and odisha is so rich in uh, natural resources conservation of biodiversity you know and uh, study of biodiversity is very very important i agree but i do think uh, i was seeing your basic science department i was looking for uh, chemistry physics and biology and so Then, then I saw mathematics and computer science. I think I am right. So that is okay. Mathematics is a fundamental science. So computer science is because you have basic science and computational and uh, information sciences together. 
but i think uh, if you not basic science that is why at least i think the life science department start uh, you know maybe by chemistry genetics uh, these are the areas uh, ecology maybe ecology is covered in your biodiversity you know no? but you know this is uh, something uh, what is a request of course maybe you, i know about the other universities in the state the state universities i do know a little bit i interact with some of them they do have and i also interact very closely with the institute of life sciences which is a dbt institute in bhubaneswar but you said it is how many 500 kilometers <laughs> you are <laughs> you are at the border of andhra pradesh and chatisgarh or something but distance doesn't matter in this case so i think you know collaboration with uh, that will help i will all, i can also talk to ajay parida and he's a very close friend uh, the director of uh, ls uh, you know i think because central i when uh, I mean, you have a tag of a central university and this is what i did at uh, tamil nadu uh, central university when they made me when aditya made me that uh, uh, recommended me to be a chancellor i asked him what the chancellor does uh, is it just a decoration you know you only attend two meetings in a year the convocation and uh, annual meeting or something like that i said i am not there you know uh, i don't have to have all this at this point of time but i would like to see uh, more research being done this is you know the, i should tell you the central university of tamil nadu is in the uh, rice bowl of the state it is the major rice product producing area just like odisha i think you know this is the huge production of rice and that is where the university is there and just like you are in the center of uh, tribal people they are in the center of farmers so i keep saying your objective must be to benefit the farmers You research, do research, but of course they have all the departments. Aditya Prakash has established many of the departments. I think he established something like ten new departments in his in his tenure. So they have uh, microbiology. They have uh, some aspects of life sciences. Uh, so I I thought I I thought I will spend a time with their faculty, talk to them. and then see you know, because my area is life science i can't tell them much about mathematics <laughs> other areas but i can tell them about life science so i asked them and said you no know, also tell them how to write projects to get funding you have to write proper many many university people i have seen come to the center come to delhi but they they will not know how to write uh, research project this is very important maybe it should be part of the teaching part of the course how to write research projects this is very important that helps uh, you know to 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 get i am sure your faculty all will be able to get uh, projects uh, because as you know central government funding is is pretty tough although you are a central university and i have seen it happening even at the indian minister of science you know where we are worried about all the money we diverted to covid uh, what happens to the regular uh, things which uh, science which is being the bf forty two department all areas are covered at the indian minister of science so we have of course we have uh, lot more uh, covered uh, private funding also in, in the campus so i wish uh, you know uh, i think i should not uh, you want me suggested 25 30 minutes so i think i am reaching that limit so i feel you know uh, you have a great opportunity uh, you have uh, you are in the center of uh, uh, of maybe tribal culture but your objective is to reach the reach i have all your objectives i am picking that objective and that is where you know you can got to initiate And it will be a great contribution. That, uh, as I said, education is both ways. We can also learn from the others. We can also teach them. But I feel health is very important, and this is where the university can contribute. Your students can contribute. Your faculty can contribute. So I want to wish 
the Odisha University, a very bright future, a great future. And thank you so much for inviting me to give this uh, foundation day. It's a great opportunity for me to be to be knowing all of you to come to know. Uh, thank you, Professor Palita and uh, Sauro for making this possible. And uh, may all get God bless you. I'm the I'm old person, so I can do that. Uh, may all get God bless you. All. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, sir, for your insightful lecture. Uh, it will certainly help uh, our university to take forward. And uh, really, it is a message for, uh, for your information. Our uh, academic council has already decided to introduce uh, these courses, botany, zoology, under school of life science, and physics, chemistry, biotechnology, biochemistry. These have all been cleared, I think, in the times to come. Maybe another year, we will be introducing this, sir, because it is already finalized, sir. So, with these words, sir, I profusely thank uh, you uh, that you spend time with us and your inspiration will take us a long way, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Soro. recording the End the call. The call is being recorded. If you want to end the call for everyone, stop recording first. So recording stop paying me, sir. Stop it. Stop it.